Introduction Violence of the men from Northern Europe General historical opinions about the Viking gravestone is different from that of the reality of the past. Vikings were a temporary threat to the Western civilization. Hostile treatment of the Vikings populace is widely known for the so many evidences available even today as pictographs. It all started and remained for four centuries since 9th AD till the 11th. Magyars and the Moors Vikings were negative and in generic they are destructive and completely hostile to Francia. Francia was the historical centre of the ancient Europe. The traditional story begins in the historical day of Christmas in 800 AD at Rome. This is the central point of all the early Middle Age events. It can be said as one of the foremost attempts made by the Germans to unite Europe as one unit. It is called as landmark in the struggle. The church and the state were confronting one another. Huge area at that time belonged to the control of Francia. It is from the Danish march to all the way until central Italy. The successors collapsed the empire, though. The empire of Charlemagne, which was united once, was shattered into pieces in just about hundred years' time. Some of the parts were tiny and some others were large. All began to operate as autonomous units. Otto I came to throne in 1962, and that is when the eastern parts slowly started to rebuild. His successors contributed quite a lot to rebuild the eastern territories into one big French state. This development reached its climax in 1049 when King Henry III intervened. Papal reform and the Leo IX replacements were significant on the papal throne. Charles' mage promise for then fulfilled. Rise and the fail of the Carlingan Empire since 9th century till 11th century is the history of Europe, all until the German successors came into power. Viking invaders were considered a destructive force. Of reliance on the monastic chronicles, the national historians forget the other destructive forces that were on play at the same time in Europe. Internecine wars among those Irish tribes, or even the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, or even amidst the Frankish populace, were not taken into key consideration, but the Vikings were chosen to be the whipping boys. Traditional focus is completely misplaced. Scandinavian people on the northern Europe must be considered as a whole without pinpointing on the Carlonian Empire alone. Viking Civilization Raw and untamed populace of the Vikings had amazing power. Viking civilization of the northern part of the Europe was strong and vibrant. They had their imitable impact on the people of rest of the Europe. Even in those islands across the seas and oceans, they did have their dominance for centuries together. Harassments by the Vikings along the coastal side of Scotland, England and Ireland prevailed there since 1800s. It was there even before the death of Charlemagne in 1814. That was the indirection for the expansion of Francia towards the northern directions. Northern Peninsula Vikings came from the gateway initially. This vibrant community of tribes inhabited North European peninsulas. Baltic islands offshore, the Norwegian Swedish peninsulas, and the Jutland peninsulas were the entry points. These are the three places from where the Vikings originated into Europe. Denmark, Norway, and Sweden are these places today. Scandinavia and its northern tip towards Denmark is this route which was not as thickly as it was populated during the later centuries. Sea-facing countries had the sea in different directions though. West and southwest sea facing Denmark and the Norway faced it from the west. Face of Sweden is towards the east and the southeast. Fjords and mountains of Norway and the thick forests land of Sweden and some central parts of Denmark is from where the Vikings originated, making them to be wild and crude in their mannerisms. 
deep water inlets extended inwards into the country for hundreds of miles. Well above the mean sea level at 500 meters height, the place was secured enough and less occupied as well. Chapter 1 First and Foremost Raids The Vikings' raids were initially targeting the British Isles. Just like the Roman invaders and the Anglo-Saxon invaders, the Vikings and their deeds during the raids were largely misinterpreted by the hostile press uniformly. Some major parts of the British Isles remaining unchanged, as the Vikings did not bother to focus on these prime areas. The early invaders were quite heathen, persistent and highly exploitive. The pity is that they eventually were assimilated. Hopping Islands It is important to mention here about the island hopping by the Viking men with land hunger during the 9th century in particular. There was clear inner dynamics in the migration movement. When they start to be settled in Shetland, Ireland is no more an attraction for majority of these settlers. Seamen and farmers wanted to explore and invade further and further in the western dominions. Uninhabited places were the key attraction for the Vikings to settle. The Faroe Island from the Iceland and the islands closer to Greenland was not left alone. Navigational skills and the sailing skills of the Vikings must be really noted here without fail. The westward expansion ended and only short-lived when they reached the shores along the North American continent. Living on marginal land at the end of the world in Greenland shone their real prowess to the entire world. These men and women were highly skilled enough to face challenges. Above all, they were strongly united to attack and invade places and people with least mercy shown in their deeds. This is what that fetched them the biggest hostility amidst the people in Europe, North America and even in some parts of Russia in the four centuries they thrived in the world as a destructive force. Their contributions to Alta Maps later on is something that anyone need to mention here without fail. Invasions, expansions and the assaults resulted in serious consequences that there were big changes that made immediately in the territories of kingdoms before and after the assault. The Viking settlement in the central Greenland, although it was never large, there was heavy footprints even today. They were living in the edge of the world. Unlike the major parts of Ireland, where they settled earlier, there were no interventions of the Irish monks or anyone else here. Interestingly, Greenland hardly had any inhabitants at that point of time. First recorded sighting of the Viking in the Greenland continents was in the 9th AD. The immigrations were mainly due to the heavy storms at that point of time. The lost ships and many other reasons made the Viking community to move to this part of the world to sea for livelihood. Even the strongest of the human populace who are courageous enough to face oddities and highly skilled in their navigational skills were not treated with a great deal of hospitality in some parts of the world that were occupied by the earlier settlers. Here were no occupants in Greenland, though. The Vikings found the storm and the other natural catastrophic challenges to face more often in this end of the world. The best part about the invasions here, by the Viking, is that they never gave it up. They were eager to occupy more and more territories and further their expansions towards the far west. They were successful in doing so, all until the northern Atlantic shores that belonged to North American continent. Here is where the doubt arises for the historians about the discoverer of the New World, Americas. If Christopher Columbus was the one who discovered this part of the world in 14th or 15th century, then how about the findings of these Vikings in the 9th and the 10th century? Who found the Americas for the first ever time? New World, America Found Vikings were not only good in their hunting skills, conquering skills and the best navigational skills alone, but they were too good to explore places too, 
They were the first to travel further towards the northern west and find the shores of North America. The historians forged many documents and changed the actuality from what it was. There were misconceptions that were deliberately made for political reasons. So many changes were made in the manuscripts and the engravings purposely to let the world know and identify something that is not true at all. Even before the Vikings, the Asiatic populace has landed in the Americas already. It was far before during the early reigns that dates back to 30,000 years before from now. There is no doubt in this fact that the Vikings were the first to reach North America. Historical evidence is ample enough to emphasize on this fact. These millennium men and their cultural ties reached far from Iceland and Scandinavia. Discovery of the Western Hemisphere is fascinated in variety ways by the early historians and even by the modern communities for some strange motives that can hardly be predicated at all. They were diverse motives behind it. Asiatic people discovered the Western Hemisphere a long time before the Europeans did so. The Europeans authoritatively established their discovery and findings by settling there in the Western Hemisphere soon after their findings as it was suitable for their own lifestyle conditions and proximal in distance compared to what the Asiatic people did. The climatic conditions in Asia are identical to that of the North American countries, but only in the northern part of Asia. Other than that, the actual people who found the Western Hemisphere, even before the Vikings did so, were not belonging to the Northern Hemisphere at all. They were travellers from the southern tip of the Asian continent. That led to the contradicting facts and statements, as there was dominance from the other parts of the world and even from the Asiatic communities. Distance is so far from the group that found the Western Hemisphere to find the place to be suitable for living there. Settlers were meagre in numbers. That was the reason why there was a popular misconception that Columbus only discovered the Americas in the 15th century. Columbus and his crew were highly skilled navigators who had some tremendously advanced equipment and tools to face rough situations in the oceans, storms and so on. Yet the Asiatic during those days did not have anything of that kind, but still managed to reach all until the Americas by one means or the other. Probably they might have had the intellect of the phenomenal standards and the real courage and strength more than what the Vikings had to have accomplished such a feat. Vikings found the North Americas only for the second time, as the history knows it to be, and then comes in Columbus to have rediscovered the country in the later few centuries' time. Even though Vikings found the Americas, they did not settle there for quite long, as their populace was concentrated mostly in the northern part of Europe in majority. Most of the offers that are coming in today as historical evidence and proofs engravings are only emphasizing on these rare findings in particular. Europeans or the Mediterraneans? Who was there in the Americas before the Vikings arrived there in the 9th century? Ring of anachronisms are always there because of the lack of great deal of evidences to come to a valid conclusion due this regard. Some of the vague texts that might or not be original and the ambiguous engravings that could not be trusted totally are the only few evidence to show any affirmation here. Vikings Explorations German geographer named Adam, the earliest of all, has clearly mentioned in his findings about the Northern Islands. That confirms that at least thousands of Viking communities had already reached the Americas in the 12th and the 13th centuries, even before Christopher Columbus could have reached there. They called it as Vinland. Free growing crops were in abundance there. Country vines of Vinland produced some high quality wine. Trustworthy reports from the Danes have mentioned about this and not a fancy story to be mentioned here. Bremen and Adam had gathered all these information and presented in their reports. Large islands that stretch to more than 100 miles were mostly named after the Vikings. Vinland or Greenland or Iceland 
is not exceptions to this fact. There were numerous such cursed lines that were found and named by the Vikings to add on to their own credits. More than explorers and invaders, the Viking communities were well organized in their lifestyle and discipline to stay fit, agile, strong and victorious. It is the sheer determination that had led to their hug success in having scaled some unknown corridors of the world with ease. Most important, something to note down here, is that they were not civilized like the Westerners, but still they had managed to navigate through the biggest of the oceans and emerge victorious in most of the attempts of their own. It can be like conquering New England, or it can be the discover of the Vinland. There are many feats that were achieved with credible ease by the marvellous people who were blacklisted and portrayed to be destructive some, deliberately by most of the press. Conquering lands and invading countries were a matter of pride during those days, remains of which is still there in the blood of many individuals in many parts of the world. They are just waiting for the right opportunities to show their prowess to the entire world. When there are materialistic ways towards finding better facts and identifying better prospects for human life to exist in the planet for long periods of time, enough amount of time is being spent only in destructive activities right from the early days of the humankind to all until today. The civilized society today has wolves covered in sheepskin too. All they are bothered with is just only to show their dominance and make others subdue in one way or the other. That can be through sabotage, that can be through conspiracies, or it can be through evil doings of the other kind. They are not concerned about the massive number of lives that are lost in the efforts, as they consider that to be a sacrifice of the few in their own communities towards the betterment of the others. The reality, though, is easily predictable, as no one ever remains to be the top of the other races and ethnic groups. It is just a cyclical process. Even though it is all known to the common person today after so many centuries when the improved lifestyle standards and education has made us so civilized, the earlier situations were not the same. It is not just the Viking community alone that fought for a cause. There were numerous other communities around the world who were actively plotting and putting in efforts from all the sides in all the ways to get recognition and come to the limelight. If the English has tried anything of that kind, then not anyone might not be talking in English today. There are so many Spanish communities in the Southern Americas and in the Central Americas too. All these are because of the early settlers in this part of the world. If the earlier expansions had not happened, then only the natives of the particular demographics would have remained everywhere. Improvements might have been at stake. Africa is known to be a dark continent and many parts of the continent, even today, is suppressed from civilized lifestyle standards, just because of the simple reason that the invasions are the least to this part of the world since time immemorial for one reason or the other. It could be just because of the simple reason that the dark race was the strongest in the world to compete or combat with ease. That might have made the others to make up their mind and did not show much inclination to be settled in these parts of the world. Climatic conditions and the arid deserts might have threatened the early invaders. Whatever may be the reason, the invasions did not happen in large scales and as a result the connections with the outside world were limited. It is just because of that reason the developments came in very slowly to these parts of the world. Many parts of Africa are called as underdeveloped nations of the world just because of these reasons. Considering all these facts, anyone can easily come to the fact that invasions and colonization are justifiable in one way or the other as long as there are no mass killings. Therefore, this thirst to conquer was there with almost all the communities across the world. Therefore, not anyone can say the action of the Vikings to invade and expand as a wrong idea at all. They did it vigorously, though. They did it fearlessly, though. 
It was their nature to fight it hard and emerge victorious in their attempts, regardless of the strengths of the enemies that they faced. Evidences show a lot and emphasis on that fact big time. If that is the case, then there is no need to wrongly assume that the Vikings are negative and destructive groups who remain to be a menace for the Europeans for centuries together. If not the Vikings, there anyone too many internal threats in the same Francois state in varied forms. There were too many threats like the rebels and the opponent parties in the same communities. That led to the delay in the progression of the Francois state or in organizing the whole of the northwestern Europe. If not the Vikings, there could have been great delay in finding new islands of the northern east hemisphere. Even though not anyone can say these aspects to be contributions from the Viking community to the world, not anyone need have to have a misconception that the Vikings were destructive forces who remained as a huge threat to the Europeans. The Danes in the South While most attacks were fierce, the pagan ship's crew attacked the coasts of Aquitaine in the year 799. Enough repulsion was there from the natives. Many attackers were slain and thrown on the sea. Corpses were found on the seashore. The battles were deadly. Even though the number of attackers from the Danes' side were not exceeding in numbers, most often they emerged victorious in bagging big wealth. Diamonds, cash, money, Coins and gold were bagged as valuable returns and plundered back to their own domicile. Some of the brutal attacks and the brutal even repulsions from the opponents killed hundreds and hundreds of lives and even civilian lives in particular. The English advisor for Charlemagne mannered about this particular fact to the king or the emperor the Christians were being punished for their sinful acts. Even though there were counter-attacks and measures that were attempted, the emperor and leaders of the northern nations and the Frankish state, the Vikings' attack was a serious menace for the emperor and even the descendants to worry about their country and assets. This led to the weak administration and less confident successors who came to throne successfully and fear the Vikings so bad all the while. This fear and lack of self-confidence that was inherent in the minds of the successive generations about the Viking community led to the downfall. All until the 12th century, the organized efforts were not possible. Germans tried for the reunion of the European state only after the total decline of the Vikings after ruling over the whole of the Northern Hemisphere for almost 400 years or so. Horned Helmets one of the most important reasons why the Vikings were considered to be so brutal and destructive enough in their methods of approach is their fearlessness. The valiant attitude is not seen with majority of the other warriors of the same era. They are gallant enough to fight even the best of the protective gear like the armors or the horned helmets. Horned helmets are something mandatory for any warrior to be subjected into the battlefields. It is quite common, as anyone could have seen in the portraits of much diverse kind, in many historical engravings in different parts of the world. Yet the Vikings were quite distinct enough in this particular way too, as they are not wearing any of those horned helmets, but manage to fight even without any of the special protective equipments. They believed in themselves more than anyone else did. They were real warriors, and they also had the best of the skills and fitness to overcome threats of any massive kind. That confidence and aggression in these groups had led to their victories in various parts of the world. That is the reason why they had good cultural ties with the Muslims of Baghdad, too. Their focus was not limited to the European Dominion alone, but they were spread all over the north, northeast and northwestern hemispheres of the globe. Health and Hygiene They rowed boats and decapitated enemies at will. Yet that is not all that the Vikings are known for, but there are also some salient aspects of the most interesting and fascinating kind. 
They were clean and maintained hygiene all the while. They were disciplined in their lifestyle practices. There were razors, combs and many other animal-made cleaning tools and equipment found on their camp sites. They bathed at least once in a week compared to the pair Europeans at that time. Hot springs are their most favourite places to make a shower at once. They had the practice of wearing good clothes without helmets unlike the Roman and the Greeks who won the horned helmets for celebrations and festivities in particular. Technology People call the Viking communities to be barbarians with less knowledge about the civilization, but that is not a fact either. There were communities that lived with a great deal of discipline and used a lot of advanced gears, accessories, tools and equipment for varied needs of their own. They used a special type of liquids made by their own for their own communities to start fire. Lighters of this kind are highly innovative for that time when there was no discovery of kerosene or petroleum or any other similar type of gasoline to lit lamps. This liquid is extensively used during their ordeals in the jungle or in the war zone or for many other reasons of the other kind like threatening wild animals, fighting with the enemies and so on. That is because they can start fire almost immediately with the strange liquid that they were using. Similarly, there were many medicines that they had in their reserves too. These were some of the rarest herbs that had some miraculous healing powers and not known to the outside world for centuries together about the extensive benefits of the herbs. How did they know about all these, and where did they get the rarest of the herbs when they were inhabited only in the ice countries most often? These facts goes to show that they had deeper connections with many other parts of the world, from where they were able to procure such rare herbs of the specific kind to be used as a wonderful healing drug or creams. Pirates and Farmers Pirates were there in the margin communities for sure. There were people who largely liked to plunder things from the others and make a living upon it. That is the reason why they were invading the other people's territories. Yet majority of the Viking communities are not like that. They were originally interested in finding a permanent place for their own with rich natural resources and evergreen life for their successors to come as well. Fortunately, they were not able to find it so easily and that is the reason why there were so many findings to sustain. It could be the islands that they found, it could be the fire-starting liquid, or it can be the tools and the equipment that they used to combat and stay hygienic too. Interestingly, whatever they did for fitness and living made them to be far stronger than what they used to be earlier. Consider farming, for example. When enough time is spent in farming all throughout the year to make a living out of that, then naturally the fitness standards are impeccable. Adapting to diverse climatic conditions becomes innate. Fit and agile men and gallant enough to combat against enemies with sheer power and confidence unlike the others who are used to the luxurious lifestyle in the palaces and the kingdoms of the East European countries. That led to the downfall of the might empires of the East and that led to the expansion of the Viking populace all over the Northern Hemisphere in quick successions. That also led to the rapid increase in the overall population of the Vikings in between 9th century and the 10th century. Viking women were hitched earlier just by the age of 12 or so and have to live with little freedom just as most of the women did of that era. Yet, they enjoyed all the basic rights, like inheriting properties or getting back the dowries in case of a divorce and so forth. Basic rights of women were preserved well in the Viking community. When their husbands sailed for adventure, these women remained loyal to their men and led a simple life all until the reunion. Zords and Scythes if anyone is seeing a Viking virtually as a callous pirate, then anyone must understand the fact that the pirates are there in the massive number of Viking communities as only negligible proportions. Any community does have the bad men and women around for true, 
so do the Vikings too. They were majority of the Vikings who were hard-working farmers. They bred cattle for their living. It is not just the farming alone, though. Livestock sales and purchases were quite common among the Viking communities. They were living happily only by farming most of the times, more than what they did to thrive through the burglary attacks or invasions across the world. It is the main element that kept them going as fit and agile some people is the toughest of the communities around the world. They showed enough respect to the dead by doing enough formalities and rituals for the deceased. They did not bury the dead, but made a special boat for the dead ones and sent the bodies along with the course of the river or, like, water bodies in and around. This is the custom to show due respect to the dead ones. Recreational activities were unlimited with the Viking communities. They enjoyed having fun with the skiing boards. There were so many diverse types of skiing boards that were used in the early 9th and 10th century by the Viking communities who believed that skiing is one of their own best recreational activities that kept them all active. Even hundreds of years before that, the Russian ancestors had invented the skiing equipment and used it extensively to enjoy their holidays and weekends. Skiing is one of the most entertaining sports to enjoy the local climatic conditions to the core. That keeps one fit and agile regardless of the adverse climates that can pose to be a threat at times, too. Therefore, Vikings use this for recreation and fun. At the same time, the skiing activity gave them the needed fitness as well. Farming is the main occupation of the Viking communities everywhere. In fact, the major reason why they were kept on moving from one part of the world to that of the other is to look for a permanent domicile where they can settle in peace with enough chances to thrive. Lush, greeneries and the ideal lands with enough water resources are their prime targets to farm and thrive. That is the motivational aspect behind all their immigrations from Greenland to Iceland and so many other parts of the Europe all until their findings of North American shores. Chapter 2 Vikings and the Slave Trade Slave trade in the past is not something that is scarce. Everyone almost was quite inclined to buy and sell slaves. Higher prices were offered to some of the beautiful women out there by emperor and the big nobles and royal men then women of the Middle Eastern countries and the European countries too. As the climatic conditions were contrasting in both the places, there were not big trade relations that existed between the Middle East and the European countries, for people could not adapt to the hot and humid conditions of the Middle Eastern dominion to go and do sell or buy some of the most beautiful women. Vikings were daring enough to do this job, and they did carry a bunch of men and women in ships to the other parts of the world, including Russia, to sell them for good price. As basically, they were great warriors and pirates. There were so many challenge that aimed on the way to do the trades, but most of the time they emerged to victorious enough with their innate skills to fight and navigate through the rough seas. There was many too of the vying community who became so rich by doing huge slave trades in the Middle Eastern countries that flourished with great deal of wealth that was already plundered from the Asiatic people. Asia did not have one massive unit like Frankish state to be held as one unit. There were diverse races in the same dominion. Mongolian race was the dominant just only next to the forces of Ukraine and Russia. Other than that, smaller kingdoms were quite too many to not to remain secured and safe. This was taken to be advantageous by the Muslims who remained united in the Middle Eastern countries regardless of the boundary differences. There were only a few Islamic nations in the whole of the Middle Eastern dominion compared to the numerous small kingdoms with rich wealth in the Asiatic countries. Natural vegetations and the resources of gold were numerous in the sadistic dominion. Arts, handicrafts and some of the amazing stones and jewels of the most precious kind were found in some parts of Asia, which were plundered to the Middle Eastern countries by the ancient warriors who had big troops under their control. 
Moreover, for their services, they had loyal slaves bought from the northern eastern Africans. These slaves were huge and dangerous enough to be a great threat to the warriors in the battlefield. These slaves were purchased for some meagre costs by the Baghdad rulers. These slaves were used extensively to do a great deal of work, including fighting in the major wars. Briefly, it was like hiring labour from one part of the world to use it in the other part of the world for battling with the smaller dominions of the Asian continent and plunder away some valuable gold, diamonds, pearls and so on. This is why Mohammed bin Tull alone tried to invade one of the Asian countries for more than 13 times during his reign. Like that, there were so many mole emperors who found the Asian countries to be a treasure land to fulfil all third interests whenever they wanted by throwing a battle. It was not easy either. There was big resistance shown by each single king of those nations too. Yet it was not enough for the massive number of troops that were used to attack the smaller countries. Size of those countries was not even up to the size of a state as a matter of fact. One anonymous authority did not exist to secure the people of Asia altogether. This was taking due advantage by the Middle Eastern communities in the first place. There were special routes made to reach Asia from Middle East through Pakistan. Silk Route facilitated many trades during those days, but that helped the West to cheat the East in particular in the name of trading. In addition, that helped the mole rulers to plunder away wealth from the Asian countries at will. This is why historians term that route to be a silk route to reach Asia from the Western countries through Mediterranean Sea. With that said, it is needless to say about the Vikings' focus on the Middle Eastern countries in particular to do selling and buying of the slaves. They had cultural ties with the rulers of the Baghdad. Some of the beautiful men from different parts of Europe who are fair-skinned were in great demand here for the Afghans and the Arabian kings. They were able to get it as and when they are interested in buying some beautiful slaves. They were ready to pay any price for that. Especially wine is something that is scarce in the Middle East at that point of time, but it was abundant in fine quality in many parts of Europe. This was the next hot seller in the Vikings' trade. They traded in barrels that were plundered from the European vineries. They stole and sold the valuables too. This was the benefit that they were getting out of the invasions that they do often in the smaller parts of the European countries. It all started with the British Isles in the first place, and then there were hopping islands, just like that, from Greenland to Iceland, and even all until the North Americas. This shows how strong as a community they were scaling leaps and bounds in their attacking career for four centuries together. Defence from the Europeans Charles Martin and Charlemagne were the principal architects who were involved in constructing the best of the defensive mechanisms against the attack of the Vikings. Yet Vikings had three elements as pivotal in their attack, that is, surprise attack, speed in their attack, offensive attack is the third rule. This was not easy to overcome for any military force that is already worn out after facing the so many civil wars in Europe. It was Louis the Pure who then took initiatives to strengthen the coastal armies further and ensured better safety against the attack of the Vikings. Charles and Bord had the other best chances to offer protection to the locals from their domains. It was only in 862 they took key initiatives to counter the Vikings' attacks. All until then, they did underestimate the capabilities of their enemies for more than 65 odd years. Most of the key rivers were taken into key consideration to build fortified bridges to secure the place from attack.